Mr. Paul Watson, how are you? Oh, pretty good, thank you. Now guys, welcome to 31 and Pete the Surfer and of course uh, we've got Paul Watson here. He's the actual captain of the Steve Irwin. Now mate, you're embarking today again overseas to save the whales. Mate, do you want to just tell us where you're going and how long the trip's going to take? Well, we'll be heading out of Brisbane. We'll be stopping briefly in Newcastle to take on oil, then stopping in Hobart to top up the fuel tanks, and then down to the Ross Sea to, uh, to intercept the Japanese whaling fleet. Mate, now you've got a, a quite a big crew going with you this time. We have about uh, 48 people on board, yeah. Uh, a third of them are Australian, uh, a third of them are female, and the rest are from 12, 12 different countries. Wow, it's a, it's a big crew, and uh, the boat itself is quite big to sort of um, cope with the, the big crowd on the boat. Yeah, it's a 63 meter vessel, 1,000 ton vessel, and uh, yeah, we have cabins for everybody. Wow, that sounds great. And how long have you been doing this endeavor? <laughs> I've been doing this with Sea Shepherd for now 31 years, and prior to that I was with Greenpeace for seven years, and uh, I've been doing wildlife uh, activism ever since I was 10, so we're looking at, what, 48 years. <laughs> Mate, it's really great to know that the Aussies are out there sort of battling away to save the whales. It's such a great species. They're so clever, the animal. Um, I bet you've seen some really ho horrendous sort of things happening to these whales while you're out there. Yeah, I mean, it's a, the atrocities committed on the whales would never be allowed on any land animal. I mean, it takes anywhere from 10 minutes to 45 minutes for them to die. They die in incredible agony. And uh, so the, it's just really un unimaginable just how much misery these whalers inflict upon these highly intelligent, very socially complex and sensitive animals. And just um, briefly, why, why do you think the Japanese do this? It, why, why do they kill these whales? General Douglas MacArthur set up the modern whaling fleet to provide cheap meat for the uh, Japanese after the war. And now, for some reason, Japan claims this is a traditional right, even though it's only been done in for a generation. And uh, now they're saying that, well, we can do what we want. Nobody's going to tell us what we can and cannot do. And so it's really a question of national pride. It doesn't make any money. It's a very negligible part of their economy. And according to the former foreign minister of Japan, it's the biggest diplomatic headache they have. But I'm quite confident we can shut them down because we're speaking the language they understand, which is profit and loss. We've got to make sure their losses exceed their profits every year. And we've done that for three years. And we're going to go for the fourth now. Now, they get pretty hostile, the, the Japanese as well. Like, they throw little grenades and everything. Um, that's that a normal part of going out to save these whales? We've been in a lot of confrontations over the years. We've been shot at numerous times. We've been engaged in confrontations uh, with the Soviet Navy, the Norwegian Navy, uh, and now with the, with the Japanese Coast Guard. So it can get confrontational. But uh, you know, after you've taken on the Soviet Navy in Soviet waters, wow. uh, I'm not too concerned about the Japanese Coast Guard. No, mate, it's pretty heavy out there, and uh, what's your strategy this time to go out to, to stop these boats? We come up with new tactics all the time, but we always design our tactics so that they, they're effective, but at the same time won't injure anybody. And we try to make them amusing, you know, everything from firing uh, pie filling out of, our, out of pie cannons to uh, throwing rotten butter or stink bombs on their deck, that sort of thing. Mm. And if they do, like, take one of your guys, like last time we saw on TV, captive, um, how do you sort of get the guys back? Well, I knew last year when they took an Australian citizen in the Australian Antarctic Territory that mm. the Australian government was uh, obligated to intervene. I cannot see Australia uh, tolerating Japan taking Australian citizens out of that, those waters back to Japan and charging them for protecting whales. Mm. I think it will certainly create an international incident in that event. But, you know, I've got a really dedicated crew. They're willing to do whatever it takes, uh, short of injuring anybody, but they're willing to take whatever risks are ne needed in order to, to protect as many whales as possible. And uh, we've got a special celebrity coming with you this time too to give it that extra oomph over there, Daryl Hannah. Yes, uh, she's joining us. So do you think it's going to, for, for media-wise, for the Japanese media and, and the Australian media, of course, sort of help, help things come along and maybe get across to the government so the Australian government gets behind you guys and, and helps? Well, we live in a media culture and celebrities uh, pull a lot of weight and I always uh, have always said that you know, to be an activist, really what you need to do is take your talents, your abilities, your skills and put it into the service of protecting this planet. And that's what uh, celebrities can do, is use their uh, their skills. You know, the light that shines on them, they can focus on the issue. And, uh, and it's very helpful. Now, you've got Peter Garrett. He's sort of behind you guys, but he's not doing much. I don't think he's really behind us. He's been actually, ever since the government's come in, they've been very uh, passive-aggressive uh, towards us. They're trying to force us out of, out of here because of pressure from... Uh, from Japan. In September of 2007, uh, Mr. Garrett uh, admonished the Howard government and said how it was all talk and no action, all pretty mm. pictures, and, and what was needed was an aggressive response, had to go to court, take them to court. Well, he may as well have been talking to himself a year later. It's really amazing how when you're in opposition, you're all, you know, blustery and let's go and 
get them and do this and everything. But once you get into office, it's like it's sort of it's my backroom theory of politics that mm. after you're elected, they take you into the back room and explain things to you <laughs> yeah. as to who your real masters are. So what's the best way to sort of get things moving? Is it better if we get the Australian public out there right behind you and, and sort of start petitioning for you guys and, and sending in money for you guys? Or, or how do you sort of need help? Because that's what we're here for, to sort of help you guys, because you're going out there helping these great animals. Well, the more support we get, the more effective we can become. If we can get two ships, then we can be 100% effective, not just 50% effective. So mm. that's what where our goal is to is to purchase a second ship, and of course ships cost money, so that's our, our most important uh, need. But also, you know, it's good, I think, for Australians to keep reminding the uh, Australian government to make good on some of their election promises, and one of those promises was to take an aggressive and uh, a strong defense of the whales. And you've named the ship now Steve Irwin, yes. after uh, our Aussie celebrity, Mr. Croc, mm -hmm. and uh, what a great way to go overseas to do it with the Steve Irwin. And mate, um, I wish you all the best over there. Thank you. And of course, Australian public out there watching, if they do want to get in contact with donations or anything, they can sort of get in contact with you um, in Sydney or... Well, we have a website, seashepherd.org, and that'd be the best okay. way to do it. Sounds good, mate. Thanks again, mate. And good luck out there on the ship, mate. And uh, all the best for those whales and save as many as you can. Thank you. Thank you.